Chapter 32, Beware of the Rats. The candlelight on Meg's tray revealed Gregory limping towards her, the thick rope tied around his ankle, his hands outstretched. You, Gregory presumes, have brought food for the jailer. Gore, said Meg. She took a step backward. Give it here, said Gregory, and he took the tray from Meg and sat down on an overturned kettle that had rolled free from the tower. He balanced the tray on his knees and stared at the covered plate. Gregory assumes that today, again, there is no soup. Eh? said Meg. Soup, shouted Gregory. Illegal, shouted Meg back. Most foolish, muttered Gregory as he lifted the cover off the plate. Too foolish to be, to be born, a world without soup. He picked up a drumstick and put the whole of it in his mouth and chewed and swallowed. Here, said Meg, staring hard at him, you forgot the bones. Not forgotten, chewed. Gore, said Meg, staring at Gregory with respect. You eat the bones? You are most ferocious. Gregory ate another piece of chicken, a wing, bones and all, and then another. Meg watched him admiringly. Someday, she said, moved suddenly to tell this man her deepest wish, I will be a princess. At this pronouncement, Chiaroscuro, who was still at Meg's side, did a small deliberate jig of joy. In the light of one candle, his dancing shadow was large and fearsome indeed. Gregory sees you, Gregory said to the rat's shadow. Broscuro ceased his dance. He moved to hide beneath Mig's skirt. Eh, shouted Mig, what's that? Nothing, said Gregory. So you aim to be a princess. While everyone has a foolish dream, Gregory, for instance, dreams of a world where soup is legal. And that rat, Gregory is sure, has some foolish dream too. If only you knew, whispered Roscuro. What? shouted Mig. Gregory said nothing more. Instead, he reached into his pocket and then held his napkin up to his face and sneezed into it once, twice, three times. Bless you, shouted Mig. Bless you, bless you. Back to the world of light. Gregory whispered, and then he balled the napkin up and placed it on the tray. Gregory is done, he said, and he held the tray out to Mig. Done are you? Then the tray goes back upstairs. Cook says it must. You take the tray to the deep downs, you wait for the old man to eat, and then you bring the tray back. Them's my instructions. Did they instruct you too to beware of rats? The what? The rats. What about them? Beware of them, shouted Gregory. Right, said Mig. Beware the rats. Roscuro, hidden beneath Mig's skirt, rubbed his foot paws together. Warn her all you like, old man, he whispered. My hour has arrived. The time is now and your rope must break. No nib nibbling this time, rather a serious chew that will break it in two. Yes, it's all coming clear. Revenge is at hand. Now remember the jailer, when he told the story about selling his daughter for the red tablecloth. And we now know that Mig is that daughter and they don't realize yet of who each other are. I wonder if they will figure that out.